All right, hey guys, Pilot Steve. We're gonna go for a little flight today. See if we can get this manifold pressure stuff worked out a little bit better. The consensus of everybody on the internet is 41 inches and 41 gallons per hour. That's what I'm gonna shoot for on takeoff and see how that does. Got my Sharpie with me so I can mark it on the throttle. And I'll put some kind of a retainer on the throttle shaft so that it'll stop there. And I'll just go fire her wall forward while I'm takeoff. And I think that might fix the problems. But anyhow, Lance Air is ready to go. Just got it pre-flighted. And um, got all my junk in there. And looking forward to a nice flight. It's a beautiful day today. So Pilot Steve, we'll see you in there. All right, guys, Pilot Steve back with you, getting ready for a flight. We're taxiing out and uh, talking to ground. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, ATC audio for you on this one. Forgot to plug it in. So uh, we'll get it next time. Wasn't much anyhow. It's an all VFR flight. And as I was taxiing out, I don't know if you saw there, but they got the taxiway blocked. They're doing some kind of construction on it. So they had me turn up one of the runways that intersects the main runway and taxi a little bit on it, back taxi a little bit on it so I could get back onto the taxiway, the solid Gulf Shores, taxiway Alpha. And I'm taxiing down to the end of the taxiway to get ready for my takeoff. I've already done the run up and everything ahead of time. I did it back at the hangars. And now I'm getting ready to uh, check in with the tower let them know I'm ready for takeoff. And I'm at the whole short line of runway 27, as you can see. All right, just waiting for them to clear me. Happened just a second here. Also performing my last checklist items. Make sure the canopy's locked. And uh, review my speeds and temperatures and everything. Sure everything looks good before takeoff. In this particular time, because they are using the runway to back taxi, they had to make sure they didn't have any airplanes coming before they cleared me for takeoff. And they finally did clear me. You see me moving up here. And uh, getting ready to take off. Now I'm shooting for 41 inches and 41 gallons per hour on takeoff. And it's a lot to do when you're trying to uh, look for particular settings, keep enough right rudder, look out, be sure you're straight down the runway, make sure there's nothing unusual going on. So this is a busy time, but uh, we get to take off speed very quickly. It's, uh, I usually try to lift the nose up at 75 knots. See, we're in the air, climbing out here at between 1,500 and 2,000 feet per minute, which is uh, pretty darn good for a heavy airplane, fully loaded with fuel. And I'm not pushing it, so. Um, I did go to 41 gallons, got it adjusted, and 41 inches of manifold there, and it started flashing me. Apparently the Garmin G3X is set at 39 inches. After that it starts flashing. And, uh, I don't know, that's all, that's pretty good. Um, temperature still came up higher than I wanted, and I didn't realize it until too late that I had the nose up too high. I'm climbing at 2,500 feet for a minute here. I really was wanting to get down to 1,000. I finally noticed it and dropped the nose, and temperatures did come down some, but not, still not where I wanted. So I went ahead and climbed up to 2,000 feet, 2,500 feet, something like that, and then started leaning back for uh, Lena Peak climb. 
it seems to keep the temperatures down, especially at a thousand feet per minute. And, uh, I've got the video sped up here, so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Uh, but uh, eventually, the temperatures did come down to where I wanted them. And I'm climbing up to 4,500 feet. I'm going to do some air work. So um, I'll be back with you shortly. You can watch things as they go on here. Um, I had a little problem with the autopilot today. I'm not sure you'll see it later in the video. Um, and I, this has happened to me one time before uh, where I think I've got it all set properly. I've got it on altitude hold. It's holding altitude. And I'll take my eye off of it for a little bit, and before I know it, I'm descending. So I, I don't know what's going on with that. The autopilot says everything's on right. Everything looks right on the display. So there's some kind of problem with that. But, uh, as you all know, I flew to um, Atlanta, in the Atlanta area, down to Griffin, Georgia, a few weeks ago. And... Uh, at the avionics shop there, take a look at everything. And I'm gonna put a whole new panel in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Garmin Autopilot in with a couple of G3X touches, full-size displays, build a complete new panel. And you'll see in the video here, kind of a rendering of what it might look like. Anyhow, I'll let you uh, watch my flight. Did some flight testing on uh, speeds and uh, I can just tell you that from what I wrote down there again single pilot it's hard to do everything and make notes and all, but from what I can remember is that um, at 4500 feet 2400 rpm 16 gallons per hour Lena Peak likes to do around 215 220 true airspeed which is pretty good at this altitude. Uh, if I was up higher, I'm sure I'd get it up to 225, 230. So I did a east and west trek uh, at that setting to kind of be sure it worked out. And then I went ahead and upped it to 34 inches of manifold, 2400 RPM. It took about 18 inches, excuse me, 18 gallons per hour to keep things where I needed it. But I did get the speed up to 230 knots true airspeed, so uh, there is a high speed flight area that will work. And then I said, what the heck, I may have to conserve fuel on a long flight, so let's, let's look at that. So I went down to um, 25 inches of manifold, 2400 RPM. That brought the fuel burn down to about 13 gallons per hour. And still was right at 200 knots true airspeed. So that was fine. That'll work too for a longer cross-country flight. Well, anyhow, enjoy the video. I'll be back with you on the landing.
All right, guys, Pilot Steve back with you, getting ready for the landing. See here, I'm traveling down the beautiful Gulf of Mexico and Gulf Shores in Orange Beach, Alabama, heading to Jack Edwards International Airport. I'm talking to the tower, and they asked me to report a five-mile southwest position, and then asked me to report um, midfield downwind. I did. They don't have radar in the tower, so they're looking for you. So I've got my pulse lights going so they can see me. And they had landing traffic ahead of me. And so they were trying to do the spacing, so I just asked them, hey guys, if you don't mind, call my base, because they're looking at all the airplanes, and I'm not really seeing the little Cessna headed in. Once I did make my turn here, I did see him almost over the threshold. So I'm making my base turn. And normally I try to be at pattern altitude uh, during the base turn, make sure the gear's down, put some flaps in, and um, everything looks good here. Uh, get it slowed up to uh, as you can tell, maybe the 130, 140 knot range here, which is gear speed. And I like to stay high on these landings. Uh, it seems to work out better. Got plenty of runway. So I'm turning final now. <clears throat> Still getting the speed down. You can see when I make these turns, airspeed really drops. So that's one thing to keep in mind on these short wing airplanes that they really lose a lot of lift in the turn, so you gotta have the speed. My minimum speed anywhere in flight right now until I get better equipped with the airplane is 100 knots. So I'm not gonna go below 100 knots ever. Um, you know, I'll really watch for that. I'm on short final now. Um, been cleared to land and uh, got full flaps in. Still a little fast, but I, I like to be high and fast because the airspeed will bleed off very quickly. And, um, so I'm lined up with the runway. And I'll pull the power all the way back at this point because I've got plenty of height. That's why I like being high. I can pull the power back and then just glide down to the runway. And see 90 knots here, landing speed which is perfect. And there's touchdown. And I hit the brakes a little too hard here. I seem fast. I don't know. It just looks fast, but it, I really didn't need to get on the brakes. So when I hit the brakes, it kind of threw me to the side a little bit. I'm not going to do that again. And, uh, at this point, got the flaps up and uh, just let it slow down on its own. And that's, that's a better way to do it. And once again, because they had construction on the taxiway, and I was going to what we call the West Hangers, which is, I landed on the 2-7 to the west, so they just cleared me to taxi all the way down to the end of the runway, which I did, and um, got over to the hangar area and just turned the airplane so I could easily push it back. I have a little uh, aero cart, electric pusher, and it works fine. And so I uh, went ahead and left the video in all the way to the end, so you parking at the hangars, but it's a great little flight to do some testing, and glad you guys came along with me. So this is Pilot Steve. I'll see you all in the next video.